Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing a new video for you guys, and this time I got a bubble in my throat. <clears throat> okay. Anyways, um, I'm doing a new show. A new series of videos. I don't know how long it's gonna last. I don't know how many of these I'm gonna do. Maybe it's just gonna be for a short while. I don't know. But uh, it's gonna be called Before It's Out. Now, basically, in these videos, I talk about a certain Transformers figure before it actually gets released. So, I want to clarify that um, some of the things I'm just talking about is from a visual perspective and what I know about the figure looking at it. Alright? It's just based on all the information that I heard. So, things are definitely going to change when you actually have the figure in hand. So this is a pre-review, I just want to make that clear. Anyways, the figure hasn't been released yet, there's been no reviews whatsoever, so let's go ahead and talk about it. And first off, we're going to start with the truck mode. Now, I like the look of the truck mode, I, I think it looks very nice. Um, if it wasn't for the sides of the cab section, like the front of the cab section could use a little bit more paint applications with the, the lights, but I, I think it's mostly the sides because they're just like giant chunks of red that could have been painted silver or something and it's rather annoying even like if they were to paint in like just a few things silver I, I think that would have been fine unfortunately they decided not to in these promo pictures um, but what is cool is that you can actually put the uh, the headmaster or the Titan Master inside the cab section of or not the cab section the trailer section of the truck and you can actually plug the sword and the gun on the side surprisingly enough the sword actually kind of fits with it maybe it's just because it's a flat piece and it's kind of more flesh to the side of the trailer but uh, overall I, I, I think the truck mode is alright if it wasn't for the paint applications now with Optimus Prime I'm kind of getting tired of like the same old Optimus Prime we've been getting I mean, is anyone else kind of tired? I, I didn't really get the Robots in Disguise Optimus Prime, the first one, because the color scheme was kind of boring to me. You know, it, it was just the same basic red and blue Optimus Prime, didn't really change much. I didn't really have a need to get it until they changed it and made it all blue. And I actually want to get the red and black one. I still haven't found that yet. Um, but, um,. You know, I, I kind of like when they actually change up Optimus Prime, because he's kind of getting a little boring to me. Um, the white Optimus Prime that I got here is actually very cool. I actually really do like this figure. So, I appreciate it when they actually change up Optimus Prime and not just, like, decorate it with, like, all these kibbly bits, like the Power Surge Optimus Prime that just kind of looks out of place, because it looks like the regular Optimus Prime, but you slapped on, like, little bits of whatever. It, it just looks like someone just put glue and just uh, had a had white paint and just had a party with it. Anyways, with this figure, because it seems like this is going to be turned into Octane, or more so, this was originally going to be Octane, but they decided to go with Optimus Prime first, and then they'll release it as Octane, as a as a remold. Um, but what what's cool about that is. Because Octane is a triple changer and he also has a jet mode, Optimus Prime is going to carry that jet mode. Now, if you don't like the idea of Optimus Prime being a jet, ignore it. You can completely ignore it. In fact, I didn't even realize that Optimus Prime was going to have a jet mode when we first uh, took a look at the uh, at the uh, the robot mode images that we got a while back. But taking a look at the jet mode, my only complaint is the cab section at the bottom, which are meant to be exhaust, and it just doesn't work for me. Other than that, I love this thing. I actually really do. It actually changes up the idea of Optimus Prime so much, to the point where I actually want to see more Optimus Primes that transform into a jet. It looks cool. It actually kind of looks like a passenger plane, which I actually really do like. The front section of the jet just looks fantastic, I love it. Very small wings, which is something to kind of complain about, and the weapons don't really look good in this alt mode, but uh, I really do like it. I, I really enjoy it. Um, 
And then as far as the robot mode is concerned, I love the look of the robot mode. It looks like a Japanese um, style Optimus Prime, which I really like. Uh, the paint applications, while it doesn't have like a huge amount of paint applications, it's got some good stuff going for it, like the gold uh, and the blue actually really do contrast well and actually break itself up, not largely, but enough. Uh, there are still some little bits of detail that could have been painted in, but, uh, you know, it, it's a pass. I mean, the blue and gold, they didn't necessarily need to do that, but they decided to go ahead and do that. And what I think also helps is the red nose cone for the jet that folds into the legs. Now the unfortunate part is I kind of worry about that because that means that the blue is going to be, uh, sorry, the blue is going to be painted over the red plastic. So what I, what I'm saying is, um, will the dark blue color kind of look off compared to the rest of the jet? Um, so that's kind of something to worry about. But as far as the robot mode is concerned, it gives him a little bit more coloring to his legs. Now, of course, the robot mode is inspired by the Laser Optimus Prime. In fact, it even has some, like, um, some of the other Japanese Optimus Primes incorporated to it, or at least it feels like it's inspired by that. But, um, I, I feel like this is good and enough of a change-up like, it's definitely inspired by the old classic Optimus Prime, but I feel like there's enough going on to where it feels a little more unique, and that's what I like about it. So, if you guys don't like it, comment below. If you guys do like it, comment below. Either way, comment below. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. I think that this Optimus Prime is pretty cool, and the fact that it has a jet mode, it actually makes me really want it. Now I know some G1ers are going to be like, well, Optimus Prime never has a jet mode. You know what, it's 32, uh, 32 years later, we've kind of seen the same Optimus Prime. I mean, Optimus Prime has changed a lot, but we've also seen kind of the, the repeat of Optimus Prime. I want to see something different. I want to see something unique, not just like the Power Surge Optimus Prime to where they just, it, it just looks like, again, glue and paint just had a party on him. No. I want to see a nice looking Optimus Prime that's a little different than what we've been getting lately. And I think this is it. It's pretty cool. I like it. So anyways, that's pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. Do you guys want to see more videos like this? I'm going to be doing another video about Megatron, but is there another upcoming figure that you guys want me to talk about? Please comment below, let me know. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun do that, and I'll see you guys next time. This bye. Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing a new video for you guys, and this time, it's another Before It's Out video. Now, this is basically a pre-review before the actual initial figure that we're talking about is released. So, I want to keep that in mind. This figure has not yet released. As of the time of the recording of this video, I am only talking about what I've seen of the figure, the images, and all the information that I've seen as of now. Alright? You know, there, there's going to be some information that I kind of miss, but until we get a full review, I'm just taking a look at the images and basing my opinion on that. So this Megatron seems to be um, coming from a uh, what will be Blitzwing. And what I mean by that is, if you remember the Optimus Prime at Motormaster from Combiner Wars, it's kind of clear that that mold came out for Motormaster. But uh, they decided to make the Optimus Prime first, and then what it was originally intended to be. And it seems like they're doing that again with Megatron, but this mold was intended to be Blitzwing. Now, with that said, I actually think this is a very smart idea on a couple of reasons. Now, let's talk about the tank mode. The tank mode is a little different than your ordinary tank because it's got jet wings on the side and it's also got these boosters on the front of it. So I don't really recollect any tanks that really had that. But, uh, you know, there's something charming about that. You know, sometimes with the triple changers, you don't really get them all right. And you're gonna have like, parts from another mode in another mode 
and it just doesn't look right. But me, honestly, I kind of like the charm of that. You know, it, 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 it's not perfect, but it's something charming to it. And I, I know they tried. I know they have their restrictions, and I also know that they tried with those restrictions. Um, but from what I'm seeing, it actually does look good. I actually like the idea that the wings just fold down like that. And um, you can also take the major tank barrel, the, uh, the fusion cannon, and you can actually take that off. And it shows like a little, little, little tiny silver cannon, which seems to be a, a reference to Megatron's pistol mode, which I really like. So I imagine that a bunch of people are going to make like a fan-made pistol mode for this guy, so that's going to be kind of cool. Anyways, let's take a look at the jet mode. Now, this is the smart thing about this is one Megatron has transformed into multiple things in the past a jet a tank a dragon a hand for goodness sake so you know Megatron being a triple changer being a jet and a tank you know that that that's something kind of cool because Megatron has pretty much been a lot of things so it fits and with that said I think this works perfectly because apparently in Transformers the last night Megatron is going to transform into a jet and it doesn't seem like it's going to be an alien jet it seems like it's going to be a human based jet and I like the idea that they're kind of incorporating that into generations first um, thankful uh, thanks to the uh, sorry thanks to the uh, the Blitzwing character but what what's cool about this is they can kind of introduce that to get you to kind of ease into the idea that Megatron is going to transform into a jet in the next film. So that's kind of cool. Um, it seems like there's a place to put all the weapons, so that's kind of cool. And what I like about this jet mode is it's not like a futuristic jet. It, it's not like a it's it, it's not like one of those jets where the wings kind of point forward or they try to make it cool or something like that. It actually looks like a jet, like you would actually see. Um, flying around your house, like above your house and whatnot, it, it looks like an actual jet. Like an actual fighter jet, which I like that. I enjoy the fact that this isn't breaking new grounds or anything like that. It's just a jet. So that's pretty cool. It, it feels a little more classic in the style. So that's why I like. Um, it seems like you might be able to put the headmaster in the cockpit of this. I really hope so, because that'd be pretty cool. Um, overall, I really do like the style of this. I, I think it looks cool. And then, last but not least, we got Megatron in his robot mode. Now, I think his robot mode looks fantastic, except for the legs. They feel a little too small, but considering this is a triple changer, I, I, I'm going to guess and say that they really tried their best. Um, although he's got a lot of bulk in his arms, so I can imagine they could have incorporated some of that arm bulk into the legs somehow, but I don't know. I don't know how this transforms, so I can't really say for sure. I don't even know if the turret moves at all. Um, the fusion cannon looks pretty good, except for the back section, which has this gray, but it looks like you can probably put a, uh... Oh, wait. Oh, that's the second gun in the back there. Like, like the little pistol gun, which by the way, I like the idea that he actually has a little pistol gun because it looks like Megatron is carrying himself. If you recall, Megatron was a little hand pistol, so it, it just looks like Megatron is carrying himself, and I thought that idea was kind of cool. Um, he's even got like a little um, little barrel on the back of him, which, uh, which kind of feels more like a reference to his Generation 1 version, which I really do like. I like the style of it, his bulky chest is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you can swap out the Decepticon logo for an Autobot logo, I hope so. Um, I, I kind of do like the uh, the chest hair, oddly enough, on the guy. I, I thought that was kind of hilarious. And it seems like the wings can be incorporated into different ways. Like I, I can see them flat on his back. But it looks like you can probably like fold them out a little bit, and then the tips, they look like they can move too. So you can probably do some other little things to this guy if you guys want. Um, what I'm curious about is what they're going to do for the Blitzwing when it comes to the weapon. Now, for the weapon, I think they're going to give him a different weapon than this. 
uh, like something to actually hold in his hand, or maybe this will actually be a handheld weapon when it comes to Blitzwing or something. I don't know. Maybe they'll actually swap out the weapons because Blitzwing had a sword and a gun and the Optimus Prime seems to have that, so who knows. But uh, when it comes to this mold, I think it looks good. I still like the Combiner Wars one, but I think this might be better because it's got jet mode, it's got the, it's got the original tank mode, and it looks like it can articulate even better than the uh, Combiner Wars Megatron. If you guys do not know and don't have the Combiner Wars Megatron, I mean, it's kind of cool, it looks alright, but you can't really get that many poses out of it. This one looks like you can get some poses out of it. The only thing that I'm going to say about this Megatron that I, I feel like is going to happen is we're going to get a lot of third-party kits for his legs to make it look like the handles. That's my guess. But uh, nonetheless, I think this Megatron looks cool. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm curious how they're going to turn it into Blitzwing, if they're going to change up the chest, the weapons, and obviously they're going to change the head. But I am curious. Anyways, that is pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all this fun dudettes. What do you think of the Titans Returns Voyager Megatron? Please comment below so I can get your opinions. And do you guys want to see more videos like this where I talk about a specific figure? Please tell me, because I'm fine with that. Anyways, that's pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Fist bump! Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here, doing another video for you guys, and this time we are taking a look at another figure for Before It's Out. Now, if you guys don't know, Before It's Out is a lineup of videos talking about a certain Transformers figure before it gets released. So this is a pre-review, I'm just taking a look at the images and trying to recollect all the information. Once the review is up, of, of course my opinion is going to change, but this is just for right now. This is just something to talk about because I wanted to talk about it. And um, I also would like to say thank you guys for 3,500 subscribers. You guys have no idea how much that means to me because I was actually trying to get that goal recently. Um, before my birthday, which is the 27th, and we got that on like the 16th or 17th, something around that. And I've noticed that I've been getting a lot more views lately. Uh, not in like the thousands or anything like that per video, but uh, a couple of hundred is not bad too. So I definitely appreciate you guys checking out my videos. Like that is awesome. Anyways, um, so let's go ahead and talk about Hot Rod. Now, the Classics Hot Rod, I think, is getting way too old. Like, the engineering and all that just belongs in the past. It's an old figure, it, it just, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, repainted in any sort of way. It doesn't need to come back for a re-release, even though they already did a re-release. They uh, released it with the Junkions in the 3-pack. Um, I, I just think that the classic Hot Rod is getting way too old and we need something new. Finally, we got something new. Now, taking a look at its alt mode, it doesn't have the exact shape of the Classics Hot Rod uh, that I remember, which is kind of like this sleek down look. Um, hell, even the movie uh, Lamborghini that they're coming out uh, for Hot Rod has that style. I mean, it kind of has that, but it also has like these sections to where it kind of droops down and up like on the sides. Uh, did that make any sense? So, anyways. Um, Basically what I'm saying is, it, it's different, but I like it. I, I really do. Um, I think it looks good. Um, I like the canopy section. You can actually put a figure in the canopy, so that's pretty cool. And I'm just going to say that the engine looks like it's actually a mold. And what I mean by that is, some people thought that that was going to be a sticker. No, it actually seems molded in, so you got that. Big spoiler in the back. Looks awesome. Very happy. Very impressed by the overall design and I can't wait for this figure to come out. Now, when you take a look at him in the robot mode, he looks really cool once again. I really like the design and everything. Now, actually going back to the alt mode, he has these two little posts on the top of the car. I wonder if, now that looks like it's meant for the Titan Masters to actually plug in on the top there, but I wonder if that's also made so that the guns can attach because his gun uh, is like a double barrel gun that the uh, Titan Master can fit in, but they can also separate to uh, make two large guns. And I actually like the style of the guns. Yes, they have this giant gap in the back, which um, 
For some guns, they don't really work. For this one, it doesn't still, but I mean, it's not that bad. Um, when you take a look at the actual figure itself, the only thing that I don't like aesthetic-wise all too much, and it's not really that big of a problem, is the headmaster, because it's mostly like a gray headmaster, and then it looks like it's got a Halloween mask on the front of it. But uh, overall, I like the design of it. It definitely reminds me of Chrome Dome in its engineering, especially with the feet. But um, most of it, I, I feel like it's going to be like a remold of Blur. I don't know why, it's just I, I feel like out of anything it's going to be Blur. And what they did is the torso is actually flipped around. Um, I, I can definitely see a bit of Blur in this. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if it actually turns out to be sharing parts with uh, the Blur figure. Um, I really do like the design of it. I like the look. I love the chest. I, I'm loving the fact that it's not like the, the fake chest. And what I mean by that is uh, sometimes they can't really get things exactly right or exactly how they want. So sometimes they'll like um, they'll, they'll like fake parts in, instead of actually having uh, like the certain parts of the alt mode actually transform into what they are. They'll actually just mold a piece and then put that other piece somewhere else like on the backpack or something like that. No, it actually looks like uh, it comes from the alt mode. So that's uh, really cool. Uh, my only concern for this is the feet, the feet themselves, because I feel like the feet can, the feet might not be able to hold the figure, and, and I, I'm just a little worried about that, because it looks like one of those pieces that just clip into place, I'm not sure exactly how strong that is, so that's pretty much the only thing I'm going to watch out for. Um, other than that, the arms look a little too long, but it, it's not that bad. Overall, I'm really excited for this figure, because finally, it's not the Classics Hot Rod. The only other Hot Rod that I have in my collection is the uh, Combiner Wars Legends Hot Rod, which is sitting on the shelf there. Uh, so I definitely need a Hot Rod. I've been into Transformers for like 10 years now, uh, since the Classics one actually came out, and I still have not gotten a good scale Hot Rod, so I kind of need this. Anyway, so that is pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun doodads. And please comment below your opinions on Hot Rod. I want to hear them. Anyway, so that is pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys. And this time it's another Before It's Out. Now, if you guys do not know what Before it, uh, sorry, Before It's Out is, it's basically a pre-review series where I take a look at a figure before it gets released. Um, so I'm just basically basing my opinions on the photos that I see. These are not my final opinions because, well, again, the figure hasn't come out as of the recording of this video. So let's talk about the figure for today, which is Six Shot, the Leader Class Titans Returns Six Shot. We're going to start with the car mode. Now, the car mode is definitely not a traditional car. It's um, it's definitely something. It looks like a, a car had sex with a tank and then this happened. Um, I'm not saying it's bad, especially when you have like six alt modes packed into one figure. But um, I did notice something about this, about Six Shot in general. Um, <clears throat> I'll talk about that in uh, another mode because we get a better look at... Um, what I'm talking about in another mode, but um, as far as the car is concerned, I kind of like the windshield. I, I, I like the fact that the uh, the Titan Master can actually go on the roof of that, which is kind of weird that he actually has a windshield that the the character won't even look through. So that that I find entertaining. But uh, <clears throat> the the front of the car mode, I actually really do like. Um, I like the claws on the side. The only thing that I don't like is the fact that the tires, the front tires, are way far back. But uh, considering how he transforms, it's not going to be perfect, so I get it. I mean, I can see the fists right there, so this is obviously not going to be perfect. You can put the guns on the top there. Uh, I believe you can remove that if you want. But uh, nonetheless, it's an okay alt mode. I do like the idea that I can actually put the... Um, the headmasters on the top of that, and it looks like you can put two headmasters on the top of that. Take a look at his jet mode. Now his jet mode actually looks really cool. I like the style of it. Um, it's not a traditional jet. 
and it's definitely not one that would actually fly because you take a look at the wings and uh, yeah that thing would not be able to fly um, but uh, I mean I do like it I like how the legs combine um, it's very flat on the top which kind of makes it look like a, a naval ship so I kind of want to put like little tiny jets on the top of that but uh, he's got a canopy right there um, so I mean there's not really much more to talk about um, I do like the guns on the side of the wings, I think that's kind of cool. Overall, I think it's alright. Now for the submarine mode, because they can't really make it a gun. However, you can turn this around and it's pretty much a gun. I mean, the, the tower at the top there is pretty much a handle. So, I actually think it's kind of smart that they called it a submarine, but really it's just a gun mode flipped upside down. Anyways, um, sorry about that. Uh, my cat also walked in. Say hi. Hi. No? No? Okay. okay. Anyways, you can put the guns on on the uh, front section there. And uh, once again, you can put the headmasters on the top there. Although, if you're using it as a gun, you're probably not going to put the headmaster there. But uh, nonetheless, I like the idea of it. I mean, the wolf head is right there. You can obviously see it. But uh, I don't mind where it is exactly. I think that... Um, if you're gonna put it somewhere, the handle is probably the best place so it doesn't really get in the way of anything. Um, I just like it overall. I, I mean, it's it's okay. And then we got the tank mode, which I don't know how I feel about the tank mode because, I mean, the bottom section looks kind of clean and I like it. Um, kind of looks like uh, if I were to call it, it, it'd be like the frog tank or something like that. Um, I don't know if that's actually a real thing. Anyways, um... But uh, it's mainly the fact that the turret just doesn't really work for the alt mode. Like, it's got a clean um, main section of a tank, and then the top section just kind of looks like it's a bunch of kibble and messed up and whatnot. So, I'm not sure how I feel about this exactly, but uh, the thing that I was talking about for the, uh, the car mode was that you could actually connect this to the Fortress Maximus, the Optimus Prime, the Blaster, and the Soundwave when they're in base mode because if you look really closely you can actually see on the wings it does have the clip system so you can attach the ramps onto that. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, you know, he, he, he's probably not going to have like an actual base mode but um, the idea of having that continued through the leader class figures I think that's kind of cool. And uh, it makes me think that the uh, Black Shadow that got announced recently will probably have a base mode because it seems like they're just going to add the clips anyways uh, despite not having a base mode or having a base mode. So, Anyways, the tank mode, I think it's alright. I kind of like how the wheels kind of flip down. I don't know, there's just something kind of cool about that. It looks like it's got like claws like a uh, movie brawl. Um, so overall, I mean it's alright, but whatever. And then you got the wolf mode. Now, some people are not going to like the wolf mode. I'm fine with it. It looks like something from Zoids. Um, but I'm fine with it overall. It does look weird. Like, it, it, the back of the legs just don't look right. It looks like someone broke Six Shot's legs and put, like, a, a wolf mask over his head. But um, I like it because it's six modes going into one figure. And, of course, we're going to get some modes that don't really look right. Um, and even some of the modes that do look right are going to have these kind of just imperfections to them. And I think for what they've done with the wolf mode, I actually like it. I like the design. I like the idea. You know, it's, it's not perfect. Of course it's not. But um, for what it is, I like its imperfection. I, I like the idea that they're at least trying for this. And... I, you know, I'm happy that they at least added it to the figure because it is something that Six Shot had. They could have easily replaced it. I mean, they called the gun mode the submarine, uh, sorry, the submarine mode. But um, nonetheless, I, I like it because it is imperfect. And then we got the robot mode, which looks gorgeous. I don't know how this guy transforms into six things. Most of them kind of look all right. Um, but still managed to have a nice clean robot mode in the end. Like the legs look clean, you can, you can find like bits and pieces of all the different alt modes, but still somehow 
Like, like, all these alt modes should not really work into one toy and then have a robot mode that still works, but somehow it all works. His arms have tank treads and wheels, his legs um, have, like, paws and uh, the front of the jet and all this, and it just works overall. I love this thing. I love the style. Um, some people might complain that maybe it's too much like the Generation 1 6 shot. I don't know. I can't really... Um, remember how the Generation 1 6 shot really looked, but, um, and, and they might say it's ripping it off or, um, that they should have changed something, but, uh, I, I think overall the design is really good. I love this. If you don't like the alt modes, it's the robot mode that really works for it. I know that some people are probably going to go after the third party, uh, I believe it's Mastermind Creations version. I'm going to go after this because it's a, a, it's a hell of a lot cheaper, and I think it manages to pull off Six Shot really well. And uh, what, what's also cool is, I imagine that the Mastermind Creation Six Shot, I don't have that figure in hand, so don't take my word for it, but it, it's probably pretty complex, which I'm not complaining about, but it's probably gonna take a long time for me to go into the six indi uh, individual modes, and what I like about the Combiner Wars versus the third party is, Combiner Wars, yes, it's very simple, but it doesn't take you like an hour to transform into alt mode, robot mode, and then combine mode. Um, so I imagine that this guy is probably like to transform to all six of the modes is probably going to take like five minutes. Which I'm okay with because it, it is six modes. It's a lot. Um, so with that out of the way, I hope this guy can get a base mode. And if not, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of fans that are going to make a seventh mode for this. In fact, I, I'm pretty certain that we're going to find different ways to make multiple other modes for this. So it's not just six, just for the fun of it. I, I think that'd be kind of cool. Uh, if you were to add one more alt mode, what would it be? Comment below, let me know. And if you want to see the last before it's out, click here. I have the 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 video right here, you can click it, doesn't it look gorgeous? It looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyways, uh, you can also subscribe right here, oh my god. Anyways, uh, so that is pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun doodads. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate you guys watching my content. I can't believe that there are people that actually enjoy my content. So, that is cool. That is hip, yo, snappity do. I don't know. Anyway, so that is pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Fist bump! Shh. I'm being invaded. My insects! What am I doing with my life? Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys and this time we are taking a look at Transformers Titans Returns Kickback for another Before It's Out video. By viewer request, a lot of you seem to really like the Before It's Out video so I decided hey I'm going to make another one. Anyways, I just want to say that take everything with a grain of salt, this figure has not come out as of the time recording of this video. I mean, that's why it's called Before It's Out, but uh, basically I want to talk about this figure. That's the reason why I'm making this video. Um, so there we go. Anyways, I do have the, uh, what is this, the, uh, they keep changing the names. I keep forgetting them. Uh, the Scrapnel and the Bombshell figures, and I like them a lot. And the, uh, the main reason why I actually got this was because they actually announced that they were doing all three of them. I didn't just want to buy like one and maybe two and then have the last one not come out, but they actually announced that they wanted to do a kickback. And now we finally got images of the kickback. Actually, we got images like a while ago, but I'm making the video now. So anyways, kickback in his alt mode is a grasshopper, which is a cue from the original Transformers Generation 1 toy. And I really like it. I like how the legs actually transform now. Uh, it, I, I feel like if the figure, like the original Transformers figure of Kickback, never did that with the leg transformation, I feel like some people would go, uh, that's obviously the leg, then it's kibble, and it, uh, and I want them to change it, or something like that. But, uh, as far as right now, I mean, that's something that the Generation 1 toy had, uh, last I recall, I should have popped up pictures of the, uh, Generation 1 figure before I did this, but whatever. Anyways, um... It's still pretty cool. I, I like the idea of that. 
Um, the front of the body doesn't seem well proportioned with the legs, but it's a grasshopper, so whatever. I, I mean, you got the little stumpy front legs and then the huge back legs, so it, it's kind of funny to watch. Um, the head of the insect mode is pretty cool. I, I do like it. I like the antennas on the top. And um, the yellow transparent wings are pretty cool. I believe they are on a... Uh, are they on a ball joint or a hinge? I think it's a hinge, actually. But uh, nonetheless, very cool. It seems like you can actually put a Titan Master figure inside the uh, the main compartment, like the clear section of it, uh, what will form his chest, so that's pretty cool. Overall, I'm pretty excited for the alt mode, and then when it comes to the robot mode, I really like the aesthetic of this, except for the arms. I don't like the kibble on its arms, and I know it's just little bits of kibble that couldn't really go anywhere else, but I think that's the only thing that really bothers me about the figure. Everything else is fine. I like the head. I like the sunglasses. That's pretty cool. Uh, the yellow antennas on the side of his head. You know, that's pretty nice. Um, he still has like these insect legs sticking out, which to some people that might be kibble, but it kind of follows through with the rest of the Insecticon, so I don't mind. Um, I hope that the purple is pretty close to at least one of these, because if you do not have these two, the purple is actually different between these, which I totally understand, but I, I'm hoping that the purple is closer to at least one of those. If not, it's not that big of a deal, but there is that. And uh, he's got a nice Decepticon logo on his chest, so that's pretty cool. Um, overall, it seems like a very basic toy, but it, it, it definitely feels like one of these guys. Like, like, he feels like he can fit in, so that's pretty cool. Overall, I'm very excited for Kickback. I cannot wait to see this figure. If you guys want to see another video of Before It's Out, click right here. And if you want to subscribe, click the thingy below, so that's pretty cool. Or, of course, there's a subscribe button. You guys know where the subscribe button is. Anyways, so that is pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun dudes. And I'll see you guys next time. Fist bump. Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here, doing another video for you guys, and this time it's another Before It's Out video. Now, before we actually talk about the figure, um, I gotta address a couple of things in a Taking a Break video. Now, there were two reasons why I was taking a break. The first one, I'm not gonna really talk about, but it doesn't really matter anymore. The second one was because I had an ear infection, and any time that I would talk, or at least sometimes I would talk, and I would get this ringing noise in my ear. Um, that seems to have gone away or diminished or whatever uh, because I seem to be fine today. I, I still feel like there's something in there and we're also going to be having a couple of storms. So as far as right now, my ears are fine, but I don't know if it's going to continue to be like that or maybe today it's just fine and then tomorrow it will go back to just being all messed up. Um, and then with the storms, as I mentioned, I don't know if I'm going to have power over the week, so I want to film a couple of videos to upload and schedule uh, throughout the week so that you guys at least have something. Anyways, for this Before It's Out video, we are taking a look at Titans Returns Bumblebee, and this was via request, which is pretty cool that uh, some people actually really do want to see uh, these videos. I'm trying to find the person that uh, requested that I do this video. It was Dr. Prime. He wanted me to take a look at Titans Returns Bumblebee, so let's go ahead and take a look at Bumblebee. Anyways, for the alt mode, I think this is pretty cool. It's got some sort of like retro look. Of course, it's not the old Volkswagen Beetle, but it's kind of to be expected. I mean, we haven't gotten that in like a long ass time, so I, I didn't really expect it to be a Volkswagen Beetle, but as far as the alt mode is concerned, I actually really like the style of it. It actually looks like a a scion, I believe that's what they're called. Now, a major thing that I, that I actually just noticed uh, looking at the picture is that he's got a spoiler in the back which may hint to Cliff Jumper. While in Generation 1, Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee were not the exact same mold, they did share some key elements, and in future toys, they actually shared the same exact mold for some of the toys. So, I imagine that this Bumblebee will be repainted, maybe with a new head, but I, I'm very certain that he will be repainted into Cliff Jumper. so any Cliff Jumper fans out there, you're gonna love that. 
Um, I can definitely see this happening in like the wave three or four for Legends class Transformers of next year. Or maybe in 2018, but I feel like um, late 2017 is when we're going to get Cliff Jumper. I could be wrong about that, but I, I really do feel like we're going to get a Cliff Jumper out of this. Anyways, um, the alt mode has some panel lines, which I'm not really sure how I feel about that, but I, I mean, I can live with it. Um, just overall, I like the style of it. it. It's pretty cool. I like the retro look to it. And again, I totally understand why it's not a Volkswagen Beetle. And to be honest, it kind of looks a little better than this. I, I, I mean, I don't hate this, but I think I like this more as a car. Now, take a look at his robot mode. And the big thing that people have noticed, and it's uh, definitely a major thing that's kind of kind of got people saying, eh, I'm not sure if I want this, is the shoulders. He's got a lot of kibble on his shoulders, mostly the windows right there. Um, he's got these very thin lower, um, sorry, upper legs, and then uh, the rest of him seems kind of normal, and then he's got these big giant chucks, uh, chucks, chunks of uh, shoulders, so I'm not sure how I feel about that personally, but I don't think it ruins the toy either, to be honest. Um, I, I think the head sculpt is fantastic. I love that. Now, he is likely going to include the feature that some of the other uh, Legends class Transformers has, and he can probably store a Titan Master figure in his chest, which is uh, pretty cool. Well, in the alt mode, it would be the canopy, but in robot mode, it's the chest. So, anyways, um, I could definitely see a cliff jumper out of this, especially with the, the front of the car. I, I will say that. It, it kind of looks neutral, or mutual, but I can't say words today. It, it kind of seems like it can work as Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee, so there's that. Um, I hope it has waist articulation. I don't know why, it's just I'm looking at this and I, I, I kind of want it to have waist articulation. I don't think it will, because I can see the transformation in this and I, I just don't see that. But I will say this, I think I'll like it better than this in robot mode too. I don't know, it's just like, I, I don't hate this Bumblebee, but he doesn't look fantastic. He doesn't blow me away. This guy, I think he looks pretty good. I, I like the design, despite the shoulders. I, I just like the look and the style of him. And him being in the Legends class uh, lineup actually does make sense. So that's pretty much my opinion. What's yours? You can comment below and let me know what your opinions are and you can also subscribe. Hey, there's a button there that you can subscribe and you can also check out that video if you want to. It looks sexy as hell. Anyways, that is pretty much it. I think you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Did I ask that already? Eh, whatever. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Fist bump. Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys, and this time we are taking a look at... What is this? Decepticon uh, Trigger Happy, I forgot its name for a second there. Um, with Blowpipe, which Blowpipe is the headmaster, and originally he was actually the, uh, the target master. Now, I'm just going to say for my opinion on target masters now being headmasters, or characters that were never headmasters are now incorporated into headmasters, I totally understand why they're doing this. You get this whole world of Transformers that can work together. And you got these little tiny characters that can work with all these other Transformers that you've got in the lineup. And they work with the city modes and all this. It, it's just, you get a lot of things to do with the Headmaster lineup. Like, I got, like, the Deluxe Hardhead and the Loudmouth and the Sentinel Prime and the things I can do with those was just... It was just so much fun just swapping up the heads and you got the little post that can work with all of them and, and I just love that. So I don't necessarily mind Blowpipe being a headmaster. I, I Actually, I love it. I, I, I totally understand where people are coming from, but you also have to understand even if they didn't do this Headmaster lineup, Blowpipe probably wouldn't have existed with this toy anyways. If they were going to do a Trigger Happy, they probably wouldn't do a Blowpipe. They probably could, but if they didn't have this whole Titan Returns, Titans, whatever lineup, I still don't see Blowpipe in the mix. 
because Cyclonus, yes, the Universe Classic Cyclonus had a Target Master, but uh, some other characters that were released for Generations didn't have their Target Masters or Headmasters. For example, uh, Generation Scourge didn't come with the Target Master, and everyone loved that figure. So it's just an added gimmick that they're applying to this because they want a whole world of Transformers that can work together, and I absolutely love it. I, I'm not a G1 purist, I will say that. I know stuff about G1 despite what some people are saying about me but um, you know I, I'm not a purist to G1 but that doesn't mean I don't love Transformers there's more to Transformers than just generation one okay and I'm taking a look at the generations figure I'm not taking a look at the generation one version I'm taking a look at the generations version I have seen the generation one version of this you can tell I've been getting comments anyways um, let's take a look at the alt mode now some people say that this looks like an X-wing I don't see an X-Wing out of this. When I think of X-Wing, I, I think of, well, X-Wing, and I, I'm not seeing that. Yes, you can see the wings on the top there, but that's not necessarily like the X-Wing. Uh, but that's just me personally. I mean, I kind of get it, but at the same time, again, an X-Wing to me is an X-Wing. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, despite that, I love the canopy section. I love how sleek that is. I mean, you can definitely tell that the back section is the legs, but the, there's some sort of shape to it that I really like. Uh, the wings look pretty cool. I like the guns. He has like a total of six guns on the on the toy, um, and that's pretty awesome. You don't even need the uh, the guns that can combine and fit the headmaster in. You, you don't even have to include those into this alt mode because he already has weapons, and that's pretty cool. Um, it seems like a Cybertronian jet. I. I love the look of this thing. I think it looks amazing, and in blue, it looks pretty cool. And as far as his robot mode is concerned, I love this. He kind of looks like an evil power glide to me, if you look at the face. Um, I, I love the, the coloring on his shoulders. The white and blue just really work together. He, he kind of reminds me of a uh, highbrow a little bit but that's not uh, a problem or anything like that uh, but I just love the style of this I mean he just looks evil um, I actually like the the chest and the canopy and how that's placed I, I think that's pretty well done um, there's not really much more I can say about this except oh yeah also uh, you can flip up the hands and just give them like the two barrel guns if you want that instead and then I saw a little hole on the guns themselves, so you can plug stuff on the side of his arms, and if you want, you flip that around, and you can also get, like, three barrels. And the the uh, the gun that the Headmaster can fit in can combine, so you can get one arm with four guns on it, so that's pretty cool. Um, I love the red on his face, that is very nice, and I'm actually excited for this figure to come out. I, I think he's going to be a really cool looking figure. I cannot wait for this, despite the fact that he, he wasn't a headmaster in Generation 1. Uh, I, I still like the look of this, I still like the style, I think he's, he's awesome, he, he really is. So anyways, with that said, I thank you guys for watching. Please comment below your thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts. And also, check out these videos. They look super sexy, don't they? Actually, they're not both videos. One's a, one's a video, and one's a subscribe. Still sexy, nonetheless. Anyways, that is pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace, bye. Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys, and this time we are taking a look at the Titans Returns Getaway or Breakaway for another Before It's Out video. Basically what that means is I'm taking a look at a figure before it actually gets released, so take everything with a grain of salt. It's just to add discussion to the toy before it actually gets released. These of course are not my final opinions. I will get a final opinion once the toy comes out and I have it in hand, if I do get it in hand. So, despite that, let's still take a look at Getaway or Breakaway, because they named him Getaway, but at the same time, the packaging that was shown at New York Comic Con shows the name Breakaway. So, I don't know what's going on there, but whatever. Let's take a look at this guy. And there's a lot of people complaining about this guy. 
and I just don't get it. <laughs> I really don't. I think he looks pretty cool. He does look like a, a very old vintage toy in his alt mode. I, I don't know. There's just something about it. I, I think the color scheme is just right. It feels it feels very 80s slash early 90s. I, I, I just... I love it. The yellow on the top is fantastic. The blue and red look fantastic. And just the color scheme, you know, I, I get why people don't like this because it does seem a little boring, but at the same time, I just like the overall design of it. I think the color scheme actually does work for it, in my personal opinion. Uh, now, I do understand that some people don't like the fact that the Headmaster is pretty much reused in a couple of different figures. Apparently, Blur and Chrome Dome pretty much use most of the same Headmaster except for the face. I, I kind of get that, but um, just taking a look at Getaway himself, I, I think he does look pretty good. Um, of course, again, some people are going to disagree with me on that, but personally, I don't really see that big of an issue to this toy. Maybe it is because there's a lack of paint on this guy, but, I mean, I'm alright with that, honestly. I I'm perfectly okay with that. And then, as far as the robot mode is concerned, I still like it. I like the design, I like the shape, I like the, uh, the detail on it. And, you know, it it it's funny how just painting it white and then adding blue and red and yellow to it in certain places makes people not want this. And I find that funny because when Chrome Dome was announced, everyone was like going crazy for that. Everyone wants it. Hell, I want that figure. I can't find it anywhere. But take a look at this. Some people don't like this. And I'm just like, what happened? <laughs> um, the weapons are in blue. I don't mind that. You know, at least it's different than, uh, than Chrome Dome in the color scheme, at least. Um, I just like the shaping of it and, and the head. The head is fantastic! I love the look of that! The mouth plate, the, the sleek look, the, everything in that. It just, it looks really good. So, I mean, feel free to disagree, of course, but in my personal opinion, I just really like the design, the detail, and yes, it is kind of simple in its paint scheme, but I think it works. I, I don't think it's bad in any way, but that again, that's my personal opinion. If you want to disagree with me on that, go ahead, disagree with me on that. I just don't understand it, personally. I mean, I, I can try and be like, well, I mean, I kind of get this and kind of get that, but it doesn't ruin the figure for me, so. Um, but again, that's just my personal opinion. So anyways, that's pretty much it. I think you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Check out this a video and a subscribe button. There you go. And I'll see you guys next time. Fist bump. Hey guys, I'm filming this on election day, and who am I voting for? No one, because I'm Canadian. Anyways, I'm doing this video about Twinferno. I'm doing another before it's out. I finally got my laptop back so I can finally do one of these videos um, in the proper way that I like it. So here we go. I will go on a rant in the beginning of this video though, so unfortunately some people might not like that. I'll try to put like a time skip or something like that on the side here so you guys can skip to that point. But anyways, I want to talk about Before It's Out. Before It's Out is a video series of me taking a look at the toy before it gets reviewed online and released. Um, it, it's an interesting thing because it's kind of like a comparison between the views of how I'm taking a look at this from the pictures compared to when it gets released. So it, it, it's just kind of like a silly comparison. Uh, just something to kind of discuss for the time being. Um, a lot of people seem to like these videos. I get uh, quite a bit of views. Um, I think they're in like the 10,000s, which isn't that bad for a video series that has like seven videos so far. That's not bad. Um, I mean, compared to some of my other videos where they have, like, probably a hundred views, but, you know, that's not bad. Um, so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna do more of these, and I'm also considering doing some third-party figures. Now, for this video, I did go and research the Generation 1 toy before I actually did the video. 
But uh, for previous videos, some people have caught on that I didn't really look at the Generation 1 version before I actually did the video. In fact, some people complained that I shouldn't even talk about the Generations figure because I didn't take a look at the Generation 1 figure. First off, I went back to, like, the six shot, and I, I, I had taken a look at the Generation 1 figure, and it is very similar, but that doesn't change my opinion on the Generation 6 shot. So, there's that. And two, I'm not taking a look at the Generation 1 figure. I'm taking a look at the Generations figure. That is what I'm here to talk about. So, the Generation 1 figure uh, sometimes can make up for some good points, but other than that, like, it's not what I'm taking a look at. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about Twinferno. Twinferno actually looks pretty good in some parts for the Beast Mode. In others, it just kind of looks awkward, most notably the midsection of the body and the wings. The wings are just so small. I'll give it credit though, they have little holes on the wings so you can attach the weapon. Um, I believe there was images beforehand that had the weapon combined and actually attached to his back. I don't know if you could do that. And if you can, I imagine that's how you're going to get the little Titan Master to actually pilot the figure. Which, by the way, loving the eye patch on the Titan Master figure. That is, that is awesome. Anyways, um, you know, the small wings, I mean, it's got a charm to them, but it's not great. Um, the thing that I really don't like about this figure is the middle of the, of the body for the figure. Um, it just doesn't look good. It, it's very thin compared to these big blocky sections of the chest and then the lower waist with the tail. It just, it doesn't look good. I don't like it. Uh, some people might give that a pass, but honestly I don't. Um, maybe from like a front view it will look better, but as far as this view is concerned from this photo, it does not look good. I'll give it credit though, I kind of like the arms, I kind of like the legs, although they kind of have a, a different texture to them. I don't know, there, there's something I kind of like about that, but I kind of wish that it was more robotic, but then again, it is a little something different. And then, with the Dragon Heads, I think that's way better than the Generation 1 version, because I believe the Generation 1 version had the, uh, the horns. Uh, you, you know how sometimes they'll mold, like, sharp points kind of down a bit, or, like, mold it, uh, next to, like, more plastic? I don't, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but they'll, they'll mold it in such a way to make sure that it doesn't break. And it, it seems like they did that with the Generation 1 version. I'm taking a look at some of the photos. Yeah, that's pretty much what they did. Um, if that makes sense. But they decided, you know what, we're not going to do that and just give them proper horns, which I really like. Um, I think they fit the character. I love the red eyes. And, you know, he looks so evil, but he's actually not a Decepticon. That actually surprised me. I didn't know that he was a Decepticon, but he is an Autobot. Uh, taking a look at the robot mode, I think this looks fantastic. I love it. Um, is he the figure that I'm most excited for out of this wave? He's not. Um, but he's not bad. I will say this, though. I don't like the placement of the guns just in the hands. It looks a little awkward, because I feel like that should be more in the actual mouth of the dragon. But I understand why it's not. Um, I believe that the dragon mouth can actually open and close, which would make things difficult. I mean, I have the Revenge of the Fallen Jetfire, and it's really difficult for me to get the cane in because the uh, the hand actually opens and closes. Um, but, uh, you know, I understand this. Uh, the wings actually give it a nice silhouette, you know? They're not too big. I, I think they could have gone bigger, but it's not that bad. Um, what I like about the dragon heads uh, being arms is that it makes him a little more unique compared to some of the other Titan Master figures. There has been other figures that uses uh, Beast Mode components for the Robot Mode, but for Titan Masters, we haven't gotten a lot of that. For a robot, like a, a person silhouette robot with the uh, Beast parts like sticking out as hands or like the chest or anything like that, and, you know, we haven't really gotten a lot of that for the Deluxes. I mean, Mindwipe and Weird Wolf were animal-like characters, but they didn't really have a lot going for the Beast Mode aesthetic going into the Robot Mode, which is okay, but, you know, I kind of like the creativity when they do incorporate some of the Alt Mode bits to the Robot Mode, and they do that for Twinferno. I love the head, 
Um, I love the detail. It looks nice. He looks like he can fit with the rest of the characters. I will say the guns are kind of boring just because it's kind of the same thing we've seen before. I mean, with Hot Rod, it's the same thing. The guns combine and you can put the Titan Master in. It's not a bad gimmick, and when you compare it to like a figure like uh, Hardhead, to where it's just the gun slapped on with another gun, it, it's not that bad. Um, so, is he the figure that I'm most excited for? Again, no he's not. But, he's not a bad looking figure. I am more excited for Trigger Happy and Hot Rod, I think I'll get those figures first before this. Um, but, as far as I'm concerned, so far, what I'm seeing, and take this with a grain of salt, because again, the figure has not been released, there's no reviews as far as I know, this guy looks pretty good. I am somewhat excited for him, but I'm not overly excited for him. Again, there are some figures that I definitely prefer over this, but he's not that bad. Anyways, that is pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys can like, comment, share, and subscribe, and check out this video right here. There's another video. Oh my god! Anyways, um, again, I thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Fist bump! Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here, doing another video for you guys, and this time, I am taking a look at Sky Shadow for another Before It's Out video, or Black Shadow, whatever you want to call them. Anyways, uh... The Before It's Out series, I should probably talk about that beforehand, is a series of videos to where I take a look at a certain Transformers toy to talk about in the topic, and pretty much it's going to be a comparison between my opinions now, without seeing reviews or without having the toy in hand or anything like that, compared to when we do get the figure in hand and we see the reviews and whatnot. Uh, just kind of like an interesting uh, thing to compare with as time goes on and it, it's just to bring up the discussion of the figure because I want to talk about it right now anyways again we are going to take a look at Black Shadow now he's got two alt modes this is not a well it is a triple changer but with the two alt modes that we're talking about it actually separates into the two alt modes because this is going to be Overlord in the future. This is pretty much a pre-mold of Overlord, which is definitely coming out, and I cannot wait for that. That is going to be so cool. But uh, take a look at the jet mode. I think the jet mode actually looks pretty good. I will say that. I like the black. I like the gold. I think the red is very nice. Um, now taking a look at the, uh, the Titans Returns Megatron review, I can definitely tell that this figure is going to have some stickers. I can definitely see that, uh, the wings are going to have stickers, which is unfortunate. I don't like that, honestly. Um, I, I think they should just get rid of that and just give us paint. I know it's gonna be super expensive, but I hate stickers, so there's that. Um, anyways, going back to the alt mode, I actually like the guns on the front. And now you can obviously tell that those are the arms and they didn't really hide them too well, but one, we're kind of used to that, you know, a lot of Jet Transformers kind of do that. And two, at least there's kind of a, a reason for the arms to be underneath there, and that's with the giant guns, which kind of remind me of some of the clone jet things, or, or not jets, but the, the carrier things, with the giant nipple guns poking out to the side. Um, I will say, when I get this figure, or if I get this figure, I will be removing that front piece. It detaches and it forms the shield and it just doesn't look like, uh, sorry, it doesn't look, uh, it doesn't look good for the jet mode. <laughs> okay, um, but overall it's not that bad. Take a look at his tank mode. It actually looks really good and again with the color scheme it looks nice. Um, this alt mode actually does not have any of the gold that goes to the, uh, the jet mode, which is pretty cool. Again, these two would separate, so you actually get the tank and the jet, so that's pretty cool. Um, I will say, though, I did take a look at some of the images from the actual New York Comic Con, and the tank mode seems a little too short for my taste, but it's not bad. I, I mean, I definitely dig the look and style of this. Now, you can attach the jet on the top of this if you want, 
but I don't really see the reason why you'd want to do that. Um, because this does transform into a plane and a tank and then the robot, I kind of want to see a Blitzwing out of this. I know we're going to get a Blitzwing out of the Megatron, but for some reason I really want to see a Blitzwing, especially with the small tank and the, uh, the weird aesthetics of it. It just, something about it reminds me of animated Blitzwing and I love it. Um, so moving on from that, we also have the base mode. Now there's pretty much like two versions of the base mode. The one that they show at New York Comic Con, which didn't look that good to me. And then this one, which I really do like. You can use the wings as ramps, and then the arms form like two giant sections that, uh, that are just off to the side. And uh, you get the giant tower, which is reminiscent of Overlord. Um, you also get the turret in the middle of that, so that's kind of cool. And then you get the giant ramps off to the side. I think that as far as the city mode, this is pretty cool. You can definitely see how it's going to connect to the Trypticon and Fortress Maximus, which is pretty cool. Um, overall, I really like the style of this. This is very nice. When, when I first saw the NYCC photos of the actual booth, and they had some weird looking base mode. It, it was mostly like this, but it, it, it was bent up on the knee joints not from the jet. You, you can see that giant uh, front section, or back section, I should say, uh, the jet cockpit that lifts up to form a tower. While most of the Transformer would actually form the tower on the New York Comic Con booth photos, and that just didn't look good to me, because it didn't look like a city to me, um, and I remember Overlord was definitely like a city. I mean, for Black Shadow, that might be okay, because he's not Overlord, but I wanted Overlord to look like this, and we're gonna get that, so that's pretty cool. And then, moving on to the robot mode. This is fantastic. I love the style of it. I, I love it more and more. It is definitely blocky, but it doesn't have a bad look. I will also give it credit, I really want to see this, I know we're going into the fourth repaint that I want to see, but, um, or technically the third repaint, because it would be the fourth figure out of the whole lineup. But anyways, what I would want to see is the Machine War Starscream out of this. I don't know why, it's just, maybe it's the head or something about it, 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 it just screams Machine War Starscream. I feel like that's what this should have been instead of Sky Shadow. Not complaining that it's Sky Shadow, but I feel like this should have been Starscream over Sky Shadow. I mean, we've had a deluxe Sky Shadow, and that looks cool. I want to get it, but uh, unfortunately, I do not uh, have that. But uh, this is pretty good, nonetheless. Uh, you can combine the shield with the gun, and that just doesn't look good to me. You can also put the shield on the side of the arm if you want, so that's good. Um... But uh, just overall, he's got a nice aesthetic. Again, he's very blocky, but it's not bad. I, I like the overall design and look of him. I think he looks pretty good. Um, so what do you guys think? Comment below, let me know. And eventually, when there's a review on this guy, I will post a link down in the description below so you guys can compare the before and after. Anyways, once again, I think you guys watch and check out that video if you guys want to, or if you don't, well, then you don't, because, I don't know. I don't, I don't own you. I don't run your life. Anyways, uh, so that's pretty much it. I think you guys watch and please like, comment, share, subscribe if you can, and I will see you guys next time. Fist ball. Well guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys, and this time it's another Before It's Out video, but it's something a little different. This is for a third party toy. Originally, Before It's Out is dedicated to Hasbro toys, but I decided, you know what, why not do some third party figures? So this is actually going to be the first third party figure I'm going to take a look at for the Before It's Out series. If you guys want to comment below and let me know any other third party figures that, have, that are uh, coming out that you guys want me to do a video on, I might look into doing that, um, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, now Before It's Out is a series of videos to where I take a look at a figure before it actually gets released, before there's actually a, a review of the toy, to kind of compare my thoughts between um, now as I'm recording this to when it gets released, when I do see the reviews, and maybe if I get it in hand, I'm not sure. 
Um, but anyways, for today's video, we are taking a look at the reformatted R24 Turbine by Mastermind Creations. This is basically a recreation of Whirl. It's a not Whirl figure. And uh, taking a look at the uh, helicopter mode, or whatever, the VTOL mode, um, it looks really good. I, I like the style of it. Um, I, I kind of like how his hands transform into the little um, turbine, it, not turbine, well, whatever, you know what I'm saying. You, you can see the hands in that. Um, I like the shape of this, I, I really do. It, it's got like an alien type shape to it, and I love it. Uh, the guns hanging off to the sides, they look pretty good, but they kind of ruin his sharp, pointy, and then curved design. I, I don't know, it just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. That's not to say that it's bad, or I don't understand why it looks like that. It just feels like those weapons should have had like, some like sharp points to them or something like that, just to kind of fit with the overall design of the character. Then again, those are just his weapons. Those aren't actually part of the uh, the actual um, character itself. Uh, but it's just, that's actually just me nitpicking at this point because the alt mode looks really good. I like its style. I like the wings and how it's got these two giant uh, beams of plastic that just kind of hold it in place. I don't know why, it's just something about that looks really good. The cockpit is pretty cool. Um, I like the color choice, the light blue. Um, so far, it looks a lot better than the um, the uh, the Hasbro one, the Hasbro Whirl that was actually released for the Generations lineup. Um, I don't hate that figure, but it doesn't really look that great. I, I mean, it's supposed to look like the Generation 1 World, more so than the IDW, uh, IDW one, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, I haven't really taken a look at the IDW comics, and I know that some characters have, like, different versions in the comics, but as far as I know, I haven't really seen a world that actually looks like that, especially with the modern IDW comics. Um, this one looks closer to that. Um, at least in robot mode. Speaking of robot mode, let's go ahead and go to the robot mode. And it looks really good. There's some charm to him. I, I really like that. Um, I actually like the kibble hanging off of the arms that, um, I don't know, there's just something about that that I really like. And Whirl always had kind of like a, a weird look to him, a weird aesthetic, especially in the comics. And uh, this turban figure actually represents that pretty well. I, I will say that. I, I like the chest and how that sticks out. I think the head is pretty cool. Um, again, the color choices is very nice. Um, I like that he's, he's got the chicken legs, which is pretty cool, you know. Um, some people may not like that in some figures. Um, but one, the, uh, what is it, the Oberon shows that you can actually straighten out the legs. So if you don't like that, you can do that. Um, but as far as uh, the turban figure, that actually does work out for it. Um, it just looks really good. I, I, I don't know what it is exactly, but I love the hands and how they just, they look creepy to me. Um, his style is just, it's charming, creepy, and that's pretty much what the characters look like. I, I mean, every time I look at Whirl, in the comics, like I Google search Whirl, it, it just has this creepy look, but also a sense of charm to it. And this one continues that. Um, does it look 100% like the IDW version that I've seen? Mm, I can nitpick it all I want, but again, that's just me nitpicking. Me personally, I like the look of it. I'm sorry that I'm not so deep into IDW comics, um, but uh, I, I gotta say, as far as this is concerned, like, not even concerning myself with the IDW comics, this looks pretty good. I, I love the style of it. Um, the coloring is pretty good. Um, maybe could have a couple of extra added details, but that's fine. Um, just overall, his design is pretty cool. I would love to see this as a purple character. I'm not gonna name names, but, um, him in purple, like a, a certain cloud figure would be pretty cool, but I don't know. Um, maybe that's just me, because I like that purple character. Anyways, um, this is pretty cool. I, I, I gotta say, kinda jealous that this is not like the Generations world. 
because again I don't hate the generations world but it's not great you know I, and I would much rather had this over the generations world so anyways that is pretty much it please comment below let me know your thoughts please do that because this is open for discussion you guys can go ahead and type in whatever as long as it's not demeaning to anyone um, if you disagree with me then you disagree with me if you agree with me you agree with me um, but personally I really want turban unfortunately I, I I don't buy a lot of third party toys because they're usually very expensive but um, not sure but I might change my mind about this one I will just have to wait and see um, but very good. I, I, I love the design of it, and Mastermind Creations, you've done it again. You've hit the ball right out of the park. It's, it's all the way in Nebraska. I don't know how, how to lead up with that joke. Anyways, that's pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Fist bump. Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys, and this time it's another Before It's Out. Now, I know I did a video on this, as well as multiple other robots in disguise figures beforehand, but one, I just quickly pointed them out because some people might just want my quick thoughts and to get my opinions out there right away on all the figures, and two, because I felt like it. So, anyways, um, I'm doing a Before It's Out on the Twin Inferno figure. If you guys don't know what Before It's Out is, basically I take a look at a figure before it's actually released. Because I want to kind of compare my opinions between back then, which is, well, now that I'm recording it, and now, which would be actually then, which I don't know why I called it now, it would be then. But if you're watching it then, then it'd be now. Get it? Anyways, so that is pretty much uh, that. Let's go ahead and talk about Twin Inferno, starting with the alt mode. Now, the alt mode is ridiculous. There is a part of me that really wants to like it, but there's also a part of me that just doesn't at the same time. I don't know. Um, maybe it has something to do with the obnoxious dragon heads? Probably. <laughs> I, I don't know, it's just I... I don't like that, because there's no purpose to it. Okay, Twinferno, aka Double Cross, originally had a double-headed dragon alt mode. And this is basically a reference to that. But here he transforms into a stealth bomber, so it doesn't make sense. Why does he have the dragon heads now? Like, I, I totally understand when Transformers, they change a character up entirely to where it has a different alt mode, it's a different character, you know, they just do that. It's fine, it's a different alliteration. I have learned to deal with it. In fact, if I were to create a whole new universe for Transformers, there would be a lot of changes that I would make to it because it's creative differences. With this, I don't see the purpose in doing the double dragon heads except to make it a reference to a Generation 1 version of Twinferno, aka Double Cross. But ignoring that because I'm sure you can fold away the dragon heads, either you can just put them underneath the arms so it's like this, or underneath the wings I should say, or just completely rotate them back. I know it will still look obnoxious, but it won't be poking out from the front of the jet mode like that. Um, with that aside, I like the red section of the Stealth Bomber, I think that's pretty cool. The wings are very nice, and we'll get to more on the wings later on. But uh, the back end, I don't like. It, it just feels like that part doesn't really need to be there. If it was more like the, uh, the Megatron that was released for the first wave of the IDW Generations lineup, then I would have been fine with it, but they decided to just put the legs in the back and I'm kind of getting tired of the same transformation over and over again and it seems like it's going to be the same transformation over and over again. So, with that out of the way, the Stealth Bomber mode, it doesn't completely win me over, but there are stuff that I like about it. Again, anything that's part of the red section, I really do like. Uh, the flames are kind of cool, they are going to be really huge coming off the back of that, but um, anything red on it, I, I like. And the blue windows and gold on the wings, that's pretty cool too, but anything gray or the dragon heads, I'm just not a fan of. Taking a look at the robot mode, I think the robot mode actually does look pretty good, 
in a way. There is still some things that bother me, but I like it because it feels a little more complete. Now, the Dragon Heads return for this mode, but this time it's his hands. And he can actually shoot fire out of the Dragon Mouth hands. That is actually something kind of cool. I, I actually do like that. Uh, the problem with that, though, is he doesn't technically have a Dragon Alt mode. Because the Stealth Bomber mode, it doesn't really fit into place. And they mainly did it as a reference and for the robot mode because that's something that the original Double Cross had. But if he's not going to transform into a dragon, I don't see the point in doing that. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, you can definitely see that the legs are hollow, but I just don't care as long as the front of the legs are not hollow. Because here's the thing, with the, the sides and the back, that can be hollow. I, I really don't care. It doesn't bother me because that's not the side that I usually see. I understand where people come from when it bothers them, but it doesn't bother me because it's just from the sides or the back. I'm mostly going to look at this from the front, and even when I'm looking at it from the sides, I don't really concentrate on that, so I, it doesn't bother me. Um, but it will bother other people. Um, the wings I really do like, because they're actually like the dragon wings. I, I like how it looks good for the alt mode, and then for the robot mode, it still retains a look from the Generation 1 toy, and it's still a reference to that. That's the problem with the dragon heads, is yes, it's a reference to the original Generation 1 toy, but it doesn't do anything for the alt mode that's really good looking or successful. So what's the point of it? With the wings, they actually try to incorporate that into the alt mode uh, and then also give him a reference in robot mode, which I really do like. The one thing, though, that I'm not sure about is his head. Because his head doesn't look that bad, but his head kind of seems a little out of place compared to the rest of the body, especially with the dragon heads. I just kind of feel like he should have more curvy and just, just a different head. Because this one looks more like an auto trooper type head, um, and he feels like he shouldn't really have that. I, I understand that the Generation 1 toy kind of had that, but I feel like this version kind of needed a different head sculpt. Um, I don't hate this toy, I, I think it looks cool uh, for some part. Um, I definitely like the flames, I, I think those are pretty cool weapons, like I really want to get those. But, uh, and, you know, the color scheme pops more than the uh, Generations Twin Inferno, which makes me think, by the way, um, speaking of the Generations Twin Inferno, I think that this is going to be a Wave 2 figure, because tw uh, there's already going to be a Twin Inferno in Wave 1, and you don't want to confuse parents with that. Um, but I think that overall, there's some good, there's some bad. He is definitely the worst out of the ones that have been recently revealed, but... If he's the worst, then it only goes up from here, then we have some pretty good figures for robots in disguise, as far as right now. Again, this video, it, it's not about having the figure in hand, it's about pretty much pre-reviewing the figure. That's why it's called Before It's Out. Anyways, that's pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun dudettes, and I will see you guys next time. Fist bump! Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys and this time I am taking a look at the Transformers Robots in Disguise Blur. Now I know I already did a video pretty much talking about all these figures that have been recently revealed, but one, I wanted to do a video that actually highlighted the figure in case people wanted to just see that, and two, because I felt like it. Also, in that video I kind of just briefly talked about the figure and I wanted to go more in depth with some of the warrior class figures so we might as well just talk about it I mean this is happening so just deal with it anyways let's go ahead and take a look at the alt mode the alt mode looks fantastic now blur is actually a character that was introduced in rescue bots which is canon to the robots in the skies and transformers prime series not sure about war for cybertron and follow cybertron you can disagree with me on that personally I don't think it is but um, definitely for Transformers Prime and Robots in Disguise. He was introduced around the same time, I believe, Salvage or whoever that other Autobot was. Um, I don't personally watch uh, Robots in Disguise. I did see a clip of it recently featuring Blur, and I think that this looks pretty good. I, I still get that feeling of the Rescue Bots Blur out of this, but 
I really do like the style of it. It is different from the original Generation 1 Blur, but it does have some key components from the original Generation 1 Blur. Like the front section of the car, it kind of looks like a, a Ferrari or something like that, um, but it has that triangle shape that a lot of the Blur figures have. So that's very cool. I like the dome shape of the canopy. It almost looks like there should be a Titans Returns figure that should fit there. And if not, I hope that there's at least a seat in there because it doesn't look like anything would go in that except for maybe the head. Uh, the gun can be applied to the side of him. It is transparent, but there might be a reason for that. And I actually do like that. Um, the wheels... I don't think they're transparent, but it would be kind of cool if they were. I don't know, maybe you might disagree with me on that, but I kind of want to see the wheels in the transparent color scheme. I, I don't think they are, but eh, there's that. And the color scheme is very good. It's got that lighter blue, it's got the gray, and then it's got that darker blue. I was upset for the Titans Returns one, not the Takara one, but the uh, Hasbro release for just being all teal. It didn't look good. I, I, I don't care. Who tells me that it's a reference to the Generation 1 toy? It just, it never impressed me. I was actually a little disappointed by that because it just looked like a pale color scheme and it didn't really work. This really does work. I like it. But going into the robot mode, it looks fantastic. I love the head sculpt. I love the visor. I think that's pretty cool. I love how the spoiler just flips up like that. Um, the legs look pretty cool. I, oh my god. Oh, I didn't think about this till just now. He looks like Wheeljack. He looks like Wheeljack. We might actually get a Wheeljack out of this guy. In fact, I think that's what's going to happen because Transformers Robots in Disguise did drop the ball that we might have some of the characters from Transformers Prime come back to the, uh, to the new show. Like Ratchet has, Soundwave has, Starscream has. I think that this figure will be remolded into Wheeljack. My personal um, opinion on that, uh, my personal prediction, I feel like the alt mode needs a little bit of remolding. Maybe, I mean, th they can change it up for Robots in Disguise, but as far as the robot mode is concerned, I totally see Wheeljack in this. Another character that I would like to see this remolded from, Sunstreaker. I, I think that Sunstreaker would be pretty cool. Sunstreaker is not technically canon in the Robots in the Skies, Rescue Bots, and Transformers Prime series. I would like to have the team up of Sideswipe and Sunstreaker come back. Yes, there is a Combined Wars figure for Sunstreaker that I can put into my Transformers Prime collection, but that doesn't feel like the true Sunstreaker from that series. And I would like to see a Sunstreaker come from this. The transparent weapon is actually a reference to rescue bots that had the Energon weapon, so that's pretty cool. And um, just overall, I like the design of it. It is definitely different from the original Generation 1 Blur, but for what it is, I think that it's pretty cool. I mean, this is a character that comes off of rescue bots. I'm personally not a huge fan of rescue bots. Um, I don't think it's that bad, but I just never watched it. it it's for little, little kids, so I, I never really got into it. But I want to see more RescueBot characters be introduced for the Transformers Robots in Disguise lineup. There was an image a while back of someone who photoshopped a couple of Generations figures and made it like a Platinum Edition RescueBots team with the heat wave and blades and whatnot, and I thought that was really cool. And so, if they do something like this for all the Rescue Bot characters, I'll buy them. I, I, I think that's pretty cool. Something for the Collector series, I think that'd be really awesome. So anyways, that is pretty much it. I think you guys watch it. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun doodads. Do you think that this is going to be a Wheeljack or Sunstreaker? Please comment below. Anyways, that is pretty much it. I think you guys watch it, and I'll see you guys next time. Fist bump. Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys and I forgot how how I like the sweater. I just, I do. It's very nice, very warm. So anyways, um, with that said, 
Um, I'm doing another before tell video, and this time we are taking a look at the Robots in Disguise Warrior Class Bludgeon. I know I did a video talking about some of the Transformers Robots in Disguise figures that was recently announced, but I figured I might as well do a spotlight video for it in case people just want my opinions on Bludgeon. Plus, also, I can extend off my opinions on Bludgeon. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the alt mode. Now, this is going to be a remold of Megatronus, and you can definitely see it in the tank treads. But I gotta say, they did a very good job on this guy. I, I just... <clears throat> sorry, I, I just think that the overall look and design is pretty cool. I, I love the, uh, the front section. Um, it's almost like the, uh, the cow catchers on trains and... I, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I think they're called cow catchers or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, um, the tank treads, you know, they're from Megatronus. Um, say what you will on that, but uh, I, I just see too much of Megatronus on that. I don't think it fails for Bludgeon. I just see Megatronus in that. Uh, but the turret section, that's when things totally change, and I think that looks very good. Um, thankfully, it doesn't have that blue color scheme like the, uh, the newer Comic-Con version showed. It, it just, with that blue color scheme, it's not because Bludgeon has had the orange and green for so long. It, it, it's because the blue just didn't really work for it. it. It just made for, like, a pale color scheme, didn't really pop. This one really pops, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I just, I like the color scheme, I like the turret, I like that it's a double, uh, barrel, um, tank, which is different from what Megatronus was, and I also like the fact that he actually transforms backwards. Like, the bottom section is the correct way for Megatronus, but the top section is the whole thing in reverse. Like, originally the arms would transform into the gun, and now that's the back section of the tank. I really do like that. Um, they made something different out of it. Um, and you can also put the blade on the top there. That's just like weapon storage. It, it doesn't really matter But uh, going into robot mode the robot mode looks amazing um, I don't know what it is, but there is something just gorgeous about this. I love the sword It, it is a simple sword, but it does its job um, You know, it's got the bludgeon colors of green and silver or whatever I don't know. Um <laughs> It would be cool if they can actually add the red to the sword. That would be pretty cool. But if they ever do a Bonsai Tron from this, I would love to see the sword in red. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, the double barrel gun, he can hold that or you can plug that onto the back. Personally, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do because I think that it looks good on the back. But an added weapon is pretty good too. Um, what they did for the legs is it's pretty much the Megatronus legs, but they gave them new kneecaps, which I really do like, but I feel like the silver on the feet should have changed. Like, it, it, they should have been, like, green or orange or red or something like that, because it just looks too much like Megatronus. I know I, I've been complaining about that, but it honestly, it just does. Um, but the upper torso looks great. Um, I don't know if... The midsection, or the, um, let me do this, you, you know the entire box section of the chest right here where all these joints and whatnot is whatever, like you open up the chest and all this. I, I thought that all this was going to be the same mold, but it turns out it's not because you can see the abdomen and it's different than Megatronus's abdomen right there, so a lot of different molding uh, to this toy, which is pretty cool. Uh, the shoulders look great. His head looks amazing, like menacing, and it's just so cool. The chest looks impressive. He's even got like kind of like a skirt thing going on, which looks cool. Just overall, I think this guy looks amazing. I cannot wait for this. Now, I probably should explain. I'm not going to do it before it's out on the Star Screen because we have gotten, we have seen the Star Screen. Uh, Previously for the Clash of the Transformers lineup, I will do a video on Skywarp, but uh, don't expect one on Starscream. Uh, maybe I'll briefly go through Starscream in that video, but um, there's that. So, anyways, that's pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun dudes. What is your opinion on the Bludgeon figure? I think it looks amazing, and I want to see a Bonsai Tron out of this. Anyways, I thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Fist bump.
Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another Before It's Out video for you guys, and this time we are taking a look at Robots in the Sky Skywarp. Now the point of Before It's Out is basically to talk about the figure before it actually gets released. Now for this one, the mold has already been out, so there's not really much to say about the mold itself, but I still want to talk about it more in depth, so here we go. I will quickly go through Starscream just right now. I won't even show the images. Uh, the Starscream looks great. I hope it's more of a classic color scheme and it has a more white, uh, like a uh, lighter gray to it. Um, I think it looks good if this is going to be a retail version of Starscream and uh, I cannot wait for that. Anyways, moving on to Skywarp. Let's first take a look at the jet mode. I think that the color scheme looks fantastic. The black and purple just really pop. Uh, the yellow cockpit also pops as well. Uh, the guns on the side are purple, which to some people that might not be a good look. Honestly, I do like that. Uh, my only complaint about the guns is that the lower arms for the robot mode seem to be purple, so I wonder if that's just gonna flesh and not look that good, but whatever doesn't matter. Um, I think that the alt mode looks fantastic. The white on it is very nice. The Decepticon logos look very good. Um, just overall, a very nice looking jet mode. And then, uh, I, I know this is quick, but going on to the robot mode, oh my god, that is Skywarp. That is freaking Skywarp. And it's hard to believe that this isn't a classic Skywarp. Um, it just looks fantastic. Like, the black and purple really does work for this toy. Uh, whenever I saw this toy, I was really hoping for the Thundercracker more than the Skywarp. I don't know why, I, I just didn't know how it would work for the Skywarp. I think it actually looks very good. Now, I heard there's some quality control problems on the Starscream. I don't personally have it right now. But uh, if there is, I hope that doesn't get worse by this because I have the War for Cybertron Starscream mold and then I have the Skywarp and Skywarp was the last one to be made. And he's got looser joints, the plastic quality is not as good, so hopefully it doesn't just get worse and worse and worse over time. But this looks very good. I am really hoping they do a Thundercracker and Hasbro, you know what? Do a Sunstorm, do an Acid Storm, I don't care. In fact, if you do a Conehead, I would be impressed. Like, even just one Conehead would be nice. But, honestly, I, I think an Acid Storm and a Sunstorm, at least a Sunstorm. I'm a guy who really loves Acid Storm, but I just, I don't know why. I look at this and I see Sunstorm in it. Um, so very good. I like the design. I like the aesthetics. I think it's very good. Doesn't change my opinion over the Starscream mold. I just think it looks great. So anyways, that's pretty much it. I think you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun doodads. What do you guys want to see this repainted as? Please comment below. Would you like to see Thundercracker, Acid Storm, or Sunstorm first? Anyways, that is pretty much it. Again, I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Fist bump. Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys and this time I'm doing another Before It's Out video. This time I am talking about the Robots in Disguise Soundwave. Now I know I already talked about this in a previous video but I wanted to go extensively on the discussion of Soundwave and maybe some people just want to hear me talk about Soundwave so here we go! Anyways, Before It's Out is a series of videos to basically where I talk about a certain figure before it gets released. It's kind of interesting to see how my opinions are now compared to when it actually gets released. Um, so here we go. Let's talk about Soundwave. Now Soundwave has this very thin spindly look and I'm not complaining about it. I mean this was a creepy look to him and now he looks like this. I will say this. Um, he kind of has like a bat look to him, which is very nice, it worked for him, and in a way this one actually retains that. Let's take a look at the alt mode. Now the alt mode really does look like it's a breakdown figure, which I find actually kind of funny. I mean it's not bad, but it, I just see breakdown in this, and I think it would be very cool if they decide to remold this into breakdown, but I think they might remold this into a different character which I might talk about later on. Anyways, the alt mode looks fantastic. It definitely looks like the Fall of Cybertron Soundwave design. I don't know, there's just something about it. Maybe it's with the wheels or the fact that he's actually a truck. 
it just looks so good. I love the gun on the top of it. I, I think that just looks fantastic. I think it just, oh, it really pops. I love it. Now, so many people are getting upset by this because Soundwave never looked like this in the show. Why does he have this design? Hmm, maybe because eventually in the show he'll have this design and you'll have to wait and see. I think some people are getting like, um, are too quick to judge. So there's that. Uh, but I love the yellow, I love the red, although the yellow, orange, and red kind of doesn't contrast too well, I think it's fine enough, you know? Um, he's also got purple lights, like, he, he's got a lot of colors on them. The two different blues on him look fantastic, like, he's got the normal blue, and then he's got this very nice dark blue. And the red windows just are fantastic, I love it, I love the look, I love the style, and it's, it just looks nice for him. And then the robot mode looks fantastic, oh my god, this is gorgeous. He's a little bit bulky, but you know what? I don't care. He looks fantastic. And like I was talking about his bat look, he's got these like bat wings on his back. Um, I, I feel like this guy should have had laser beak, but there's an activator sound wave that's going to have like a, a laser beak, either that or it's going to be buzzsaw. But uh, either way, he's going to have that. So it doesn't really matter for me. But uh, really cool looking. I like the fact that he's got the shoulder gun on a ball joint. And I'm hoping that you can pop that out and give it to his hand. That would be very good if they decide to do that. Just as an added option. Um, the head is fantastic. Now, he may look a lot more like the Generation 1 version of Soundwave. But at least he retains his head which is probably the best part of Transformers Prime Soundwave. It's even got the red, which is similar to the, uh, the version on Robots in Disguise. If you have not watched the episode, he's actually got like a red face for some reason. Um, maybe just to make it different from the Transformers Prime version, but there's that. Um, and then he's also got the red around his arms and the silver arms. Uh, that looks very good. And the blue looks fantastic. The head, again, just looks amazing, and I would love to see this remolded into Breakdown, but then I just realized something as I'm filming this video. Now, in a previous video, I mentioned that Blur could be repainted into another certain character. Soundwave might also get repainted into another certain character, and I might make a TF talk on this, but Soundwave might get remolded into Bulkhead. Just like Ratchet did with Strongarm, I feel like this is going to be Bulkhead coming soon. We'll just have to wait and see, but he's got this chunky look with this chest. Just give him smaller legs or something. Uh, it, obviously, it would have a lot of remolding, but I do see Bulkhead. I mean, even the shoulders and how that flips out, um, it definitely looks different than Bulkhead because it, it's got this bat look to it, but they can remold that to look like something else. So, I just see Bulkhead in this. I don't know if anyone's going to agree with me on that or not, but I think that we're going to get Bulkhead out of this character. So anyways, that is pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun doodads. What is your comments? Comment below. That's how comments work. And I will see you guys next time. Fist bump.